To use the Skybender, the first thing to do is to ensure that the bolts are all in place and securely tightened, especially the one here in the center, which is very important. We must also check the one here in the center and the two here on the end. Another thing is to ensure that the guardrail where we will place the tool is in perfect condition. If it is damaged, we don't use the tool. In any case, the lift shouldn't operate on construction sites if it is damaged. Then, we simply place the tool on the guardrail. I could put it anywhere on the platform, but in this case, I place it at the front. I then tighten it in place with the two clamping rings securely. Then, to ensure that the tool never falls, there are two holes here for the safety pin. And there's a safety pin attached here, so it's absolutely necessary to place one either in one hole or the other. In this case, I couldn't have placed it on the left side with the plate, so I put it on the right, ensuring the tool can never fall. Then, the tool is locked in place to prevent it from turning if I move with the platform or with the tool in my hands. It is locked here. If I want to use it, the first thing is to unlock it and thus release the rotation. In this case, the rotation is locked in reverse to give us the necessary restraint for bending the conduit. All the fold marks on the tool are identical to a traditional pipe bender. We have all the same fold marks. We have the same deductions of 5 inches for 1 half inch, 6 inches for 3 4 inch, and 8 inches for 1 inch. So we have no new learning to do. We have the same starting mark, sender marks for radius, and the only thing that differs a bit is the star, or what we call our back of 90 degree here, represented by a 90 degree angle, which is here at the end. Then, if I want to bend a conduit, the first thing after cutting is to deburr it using the included three-dimensional threader. And to bend my conduit, I simply insert it, whether the block is already open with an offset or I can do it with the block already closed. I insert my conduit at my zero mark opposite the starting mark on my conduit. Then I can bend the conduit depending on the available space on the platform. If I only have the width of the platform, I can bend it at three to five degrees because the bender allows us to do it. If I have more space, I can bend it at 20 or 30 degrees. It's not a problem. The thing to pay attention to when I bend my conduit is to try not to place your hands too far on the conduit, especially with the one half. The bigger the conduit, the farther away we can be. If we ever notice our conduit is about to break or fold incorrectly, it means we are too far and the conduit isn't bending at the right spot. So if I want to make a 90 degree bend, I will simply use the handle here on the side to move forward a bit. Then I bend the conduit according to the available space. I rotate the tool with the handle, bend, rotate the tool, bend, rotate, and bend until my conduit aligns with the 90 degree mark. Next, to release my conduit the easiest way, we have a spring-loaded handle here that can be locked open. So I just pull it and turn it to lock it in the open position. At this point, I can then rotate it in reverse and my conduit is easy to release. If I have an offset, which is not straight or overbent, I can correct it with the pipe straightener that replaces the other end of the traditional pipe bender. Simply relock the spring-loaded handle to make the next bend and my conduit is ready to install. 